Good evening, Otea. Chemistry, <laughs> right? But no, let's not start with chemistry. Let's start with something fun. Imagine waking up in a Saturday morning. The sun is up and the gentle breeze is inviting. Okay? And from your last night's deep slumber, you feel energized to do your weekly chores. So you get up, you check your pantry, and it looks like, uh-huh, it's time for you to do my groceries. So you made the list, and let's say on top of that list is cake flour. So you went to the section where it says baking goods. But as you reach for one bag, you notice that there are these tiny bottles sitting quietly at the side. Out of curiosity, you picked one up and you read the label. Written in bold print, it says, banana flavor. <laughs> okay, so let's have a little experiment. And I'm curious, what do you think, what would you do with the bottle at hand? Let's have a quick survey, shall we? By the show of hands, who among you would put the banana in a bottle back to the shelf since it is not in your list? Hmm, yeah, very pragmatic, uh-huh. <laughs> you wanna get it done quickly, right? But who among you would instead stare at the bottle and say, how in the world would a banana this big, actually this big, <laughs> would fit a bottle this small. I know, oh, yeah, we have one. <laughs> I know that the last question sounds funny, but I do believe that among us, there's at least one or two who would ask such a question. And I can relate to the latter, as I have the proclivity towards such queries. Hmm? And, in fact, such a question have enthused me to pursue chemistry. I found this gem during my high school days, and it seems to me, to cut the long story short, that the answer to the banana in a bottle problem, as written in this old textbook from my mom, who was a high school teacher, minor, major in science, minor in, major in mathematics, minor in science, that the answer is Esther. Access to a process known as chemical synthesis. But looking at this text even further, it made me realize that, hold on, it breeds more questions. For instance, what is chemical synthesis? And more importantly, who is Esther? <laughs> Moreover, what my young mind picked up was the eccentric ingredient listing. We have a banana in a bottle, but it contains an acid, an alcohol, and vinegar, all of which were not reminiscent of its appearance taste, and smell of, banana, of a banana fruit. But yet again, this gave us the distinct banana aroma. Ladies and gentlemen, my story for you tonight is actually um, chemical synthesis. And chemical synthesis is uh, rather a, a, a subject that is quite scary for most students. But for me, chemical synthesis is an art. And before the further spiel of chemical terms comes out of hand, let us define further what we have encountered thus far. According to Botanica, chemical synthesis is actually the construction of complex chemical, uh, of construction of complex chemical compounds from simpler ones. A chemical is matter, and matter is everything that is around us. An example of chemical is ester, Esther here actually is not a person, but is a type of compound. And the banana in the bottle type of question have induced me to pursue chemical research. For example, back in the Philippines, I was introduced in the field of synthetic organic chemistry by Professor Alan Patrick Macabeo. And again, like the grocery and banana in a bottle, my research involves this one. Yes, this is a bottle of a condiment, a staple in our kitchen, and yes, this is black pepper. Studies have shown that there are interesting chemistries found in the bottle of black pepper. Not just to season your food, but it, can actu it actually contains lactam alkaloids, which has promising pharmaceutical applications, including anti-cancer potential. 
Matter is composed of atoms, molecules, and ions, but I think of them as tiny puzzle pieces. Therefore, going back to the technical definition of chemical synthesis, we can think of chemical synthesis as like tiny puzzle pieces. And when we combine those pieces together, it will form new types of compounds, which has another set of chemical or bioactivity. In this case, we used pepper as an inspiration, or our initial puzzle piece, so to speak. And my job is to create more uh, uh, a new type or combine different puzzle pieces together and see which flavor of anti-cancer agent will be able to use or will be more stronger to kill cancer cells. And our collaborators from Leibniz HKI in Germany found out that several of our puzzle um, banana in a, no, sorry, pepper in a bottle inspired uh, compounds have anti-cancer potential. To further understand how this happens, we solicited the help of computer technology through a process called tyrosine kinase. Our collaborators calculated how the interaction of one of our uh, molecules with cancer, uh, enzyme called tyrosine kinase, uh, happens. No? But to explain it in a simpler term, we think of tyrosine kinase, an enzyme, which is the villain, the cancer-mediating enzyme that um, is responsible or has an effect or affects cancer growth. And what our pepper-inspired uh, molecule, when you look closely at the compound, does is that it holds on tightly to our tyrosine kinase, saying, not today, cancer, you are not allowed today. After of two years of research, or after two years of work in industry, I came back to the university to continue my research, this time in the University of Regensburg here in Germany. And again here, the trail of chemistry in a bottle follows. This is a bottle of bubble solution. And I bet you that it incites a nostalgia of our childhood days. It's amazing how we find fun and play using just a simple liquid solution. And when we dip it, using something invisible such as air, and um, through a loop with soapy solution, and our breath, we can create tiny <coughs> bubbles that create beautiful colors when kissed by the rays of sunlight. But would you believe me that aside from funny bubbles, we can actually use them to discover or create new medicines? Under the supervision of Dr. Joshua Barham, I again dipped my toes in playing chemistries in a bottle, and we used the chemistry or a process or explored the process called gas liquid photoreaction or photochemistry. What does that do? Essentially, we are using three ingredients here gas, bubbles, in my case, for instance, I used oxygen, liquid, which is liquid fragments, and light as energy source. What we do is we combine all those three together in a contraption called a photoreactor, the one with heart. Um, looking picture right here, where we use the energy from light to combine the gas bubbles or oxygen to new molecules, modifying this new um, with this, this uh, molecules and thus creating another type of compound. Using this process, for example, we've synthesized or created antiparasitic compounds such as ascaridol. We've modified antibiotics such as erythromycin. And we have um, able to synthesize new compounds that was just recently discovered back in 2021, which has promising um, uh, potentials for research in, say, neuroactivity or anti-cancer. But ladies and gentlemen, my story for you tonight is not about what chemical synthesis is, the technicalities. Let's leave that to the library. Let's leave that in, in our classroom. At the end of the day, um, not all of us chose to be scientists or to be chemists. My main message for you tonight is about perspective. Whatever you do, whoever you are, I invite you or I encourage you to always look around. Maybe the solutions to our problem is just around us. Perhaps um, the, the future of cancer research starts with a bottle of uh, pepper. Or the secret to sustainable pharmaceutical manufacturing lies within the bottle of bubbles. Somehow, or at any point of your life, I hope that you would ask your question, or I hope that you would ask a bottle in a 
a banana in the bag type of question. At the end of the day, chemistry in the bottle is about our dynamic relationship with the environment, what we do about it, and how do we benefit from it in a creative, smart, and sustainable manner. You have been an amazing audience. Thank you very much.